Hi, often we'd like to know what might happen in possible different future states. This contrived Power BI report tries to do that. We're looking at, in this case, case study of electricity generation over a month. What we see in the bar chart here is the usage, the bars are the usage, the demand for electricity, the lines are the capacity. And what we're interested in those red bars, how many red bars they are, those are breaches when the usage is greater than capacity. We've got the base case here, but we might be interested what happens if our demand increases by 20%. We can see that the number of breach days has gone from two to nine, but then maybe we can increase our capacity by uh, if we're lucky enough to have stronger wind conditions under calm air, it's gone down to six with light air we've got back to two breach days and if we had a slight breeze all the time then there would be no breach days. To do this we are going to build this from scratch. We're going to take advantage of lots of Power BI capabilities. We're going to use what if parameters and we're going to build our own homemade what if parameters as well. We're going to create that line and stacked column chart that you see at the bottom there. We're going to create that card um, the breach days that you see at top right and change the color dynamically. We'll also have this dynamic text in, in the middle here. We're also going to be writing some DAX to calculate the, um, the values that we want for our scenario values. And we'll take advantage of some interesting DAX functions like generate series and switch. So let's get started. Let's have a look at our rather contrived fictitious data for this example. We've got two tables, fact and wind conditions, and they're not even related. If we have a look at the wind conditions, basically what we've got is we've got uh, several wind strengths from no wind to moderate gale, and we've got a column just to order them so they're not ordered alphabetically, they're ordered in, cre in increasing wind speed, and a wind power column, that's the amount of extra power this wind strength will generate. And we've got our fact table that simply contains one row for every date in February, 28 rows in all, and our daily usage and our daily capacity figures there. I've gone into the query editor simply to show that these two tables I've created by simply doing enter data within Power BI, so they're kind of internal local tables. If you look in the comments in the links, uh, there's links to both of these uh, Power BI files, the one with the start state where we are now and one with the completed worked example. So here we are, we're looking at uh, daily capacity and we can see and wind conditions and we can see basically that uh, it's just a local internal file. Let's start off building a chart to show when those breaches occur. I'm going to create a line and stacked column chart. I'm going to put date onto the shared axis. The usage is going to be on my column, my values, and my line values are going to be my daily capacity. We get a strange chart here. We've got two labels, y-axes, uh, on the left, we've got the usage. On the right, we've got the capacity. For some reason, it gives me average of daily capacity. Let's just change that to sum. And we actually want one common axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along to my formatting panel. I'm going to search for my secondary axis and we've just got to switch it on and then switch it off again. And now we have got this one common axis on the left. Now let's improve the look of our chart. The first thing that we'll do is we'll give it a a decent title, not the um, automatic one. And we'll also change uh, the title of our Y axis. And finally, we'll get rid of the title on our X axis as well. Now let's set the colors of our bars so that we have a green for our usage and for our capacity, we'll make that a, a blue. And we'll also go into our labels and what we're going to do is have different customize the different series of the label so i'm going to come down here to customize series and i've got for both daily usage and daily capacity i can change labels so what i'm going to do for daily usage is i'm going to set the position inside the center and i'm going to actually increase the label density to 100 percent so this see them for every bar 
I'll switch that background off and I will change the color so it's white so it we can see it there well I'm going to do the same sort of thing for my capacity I'm going to actually put the position above so the line and I'm going to change the color to the same blue as we have for the lines the final cosmetic change I'm going to make is to fix the start and end of the y-axis that's because when we start doing our scenario analysis and the bars start changing what happens is the bars will increase in size rather than the y-axis simply rescaling right we're going to build four measures now and then we can get into our scenario analysis the first measure is simply going to be called the usage and it's simply the explicit measure uh, corresponding to that uh, sum of the daily usage to that implicit measure. I'm going to do one for usage and I'm going to do one for uh, capacity as well. So here's our capacity measure, here is our usage measure. Now we're just going to create our what if usage and our what if capacity and initially what we're going to do is make them equal to the base case so what if usage equals usage and same for what if capacity later on we'll be changing these two measures to reflect what we have on our parameters so here you can see we've got our what if capacity and we've got our what if usage now what we're going to do is replace the daily usage on our chart with a what if usage and we're going to replace the daily capacity with the what if capacity and in fact I'm going to come along and I'm going to hide our two fields here we no longer need them because we've got the usage and we've got the capacity so as you can see uh, nothing really seems to change on the chart well, we've got to really sort out these uh, labels we should do that in a minute but um, it's the same chart except with what if usage and what if capacity so our labels are back as they were before one last touch is I'm going to come to the shapes and make that a line a step line I think that's more realistic for the data we'd like to show visually when there's a breach day and when there's not so we're starting off by writing this tax calculation this tax measure is breach it's going to be called and when the usage is what if usage is greater than the what if capacity then we've got a breach otherwise we're okay so we'll create that measure and what we'll do we will just stick that measure onto our tooltips and we'll just have a look here we've got the first date and that is a breach the second date and that's breach is okay now we're going to create another measure is breach color and that depends on the tax calculation we've just done is breach and when this breach has a value breach we're going to bring in dark red otherwise forest green what are dark red and forest green these are CSS colors so if I show you this um, these are a set of about 100 color names that Power BI recognizes so what we're going to do here is we're going to come to our data colors and instead of having the default color we'll click on this formula uh, icon here we'll choose field value for the color and we're going to choose our is breach color to do that and what we can see hopefully yes is that where we get those two breaches the bars are in this dark red let's also build a DAX calculation to count the total number of breach days I'm going to call it total breach days and what I'm going to say is that it's going to count the rows and what we're actually going to do is count the rows of a filtered table and that's going to be our fact table each row is is a day so counting the rows to count the days but we're going to filter that fact table where when we can say is breach we've got that is equals breach and so what we can do is we can close our brackets and close our brackets again and let's just try that out tick it off and what we're going to do is we are going to create a card and on that rather big card we'll make it a bit smaller is we will put our total breach days and we've got the number two which is right 
now we can create our parameters. Let's create a usage one. I'm going to click on this new parameter button and I'm going to give it the name uh, usage parameter. And what we're going to say is this is a kind of percentage that we apply to the base case. I'm going to use a decimal number between 0.8 and, um, and 2.0 and in the increment of 0.2 with a default of 1.0. So basically what we're saying is that uh, the usage can drop by 20% be from 80% to 200% uh, increased by 100%. And we're going to do that as a slice of the page and we get our usage parameter. Let's just try that. Let's have a look at it. Yes, it seems to be working there. I'll make it a bit smaller. What is this usage parameter we've created? Well, it's really three things. First of all, it's a DAX table. We've created a DAX table, or Power BI has created one for us, using the generate series function, taking our start, end, and step sizes. So it's created that table. And if we want, we can have a look at it uh, in here. So it's created that table there. And the second thing it's done is in that table, it's created a measure. This measure uses selected value function and that returns the value if only one row is selected with a slicer or something like that, then it will return it. Otherwise, it will return the default of one. And finally, it's put this uh, slicer slider on screen. And as you can see, that is just selecting one value. If we come over here, and we put another card on for the moment. I'll just make that a bit smaller. And so that can reflect the uh, usage parameter. I'll put that on there. And you can see as it changes, that selected value also changes. Now the magic comes when that usage parameter value starts to affect our what if value. So here's again the original version of our what if usage measure. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to say it's a base case multiplied by the usage parameter value. And I'll tick that. And once we do that, what we'll notice is that, well, I've got 1.6, a lot of red there. As I move it around, uh, the, the bars change. And as the bars go above the line, we get more or fewer red bars and the breach days change as well. Breach days is blank. We'll fix that in just a second with a coalesce function. So let's update our total breach days formula so that uh, when there are no breaches, it gives a value of zero rather than blank because count rows would give a blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to use a variable and I'm going to say variable breaches. That's our number of breaches equals that and then I'm going to use a return statement whenever I have a variable I've got to use a return statement and I'll say just if um, breaches is is blank so I'll put it like this then it's going to come to zero otherwise we're going to use breaches there we go lovely let's tick that and see if that calculation will work and we move that out of the way we should see their total breach days of zero rather than blank. That's working fine. Now let's create a new parameter, a kind of homemade a what if parameter based on the wind conditions, which will affect the capacity. What I'm going to do first in the wind conditions is that I'm going to create a measure very similar to the usage parameter measure, a selected value measure. So let's just do that. I'm going to create a measure. I'm going to say that it's going to be called my selected wind power. And I'm going to say that it's going to be equal to the selected value of the, and the column is going to be my wind power column. And by default, I'm going to make that equal to zero. While I'm here, I'm also going to create a new measure, which I'm going to use in that for the dynamic values of the text. This time I'm going to just simply, I'm going to cut and paste. I'm going to call it selected wind strength equals, um, I'm going to change this column so it returns the wind strength column. That's the, the comment, calm or gale or whatever. Okay, let's create a visual for our wind strength. I'm going to create a slicer. I'll make it a bit smaller. And then I'm going to take the wind strength and put it on there. 
gives us the list. I actually just want one wind strength at a time. So I'm going to set the single select to on. That's good. And just to prove that it's going to be working, what I'm going to do is create a, another. I'm going to click on there and create a card. And on that card, I'm going to put my selected wind power. That's the extra power I'll get from the wind. And what we can see that that is working. And just as with, with usage, I'm going to change the my what if capacity calculation this time instead of multiplying, this is actually adding on. So I'll say what if capacity plus select selected wind power. And I'm going to tick that off. And then what we can do is we can come along and we can see what happens as we go up. Let's just change that, that and increase. And we can see that that is increasing it. What happens in a moderate gale? gentle breeze, uh, slight breeze. Let's improve this card in a couple of ways. The first way is to have a title that says what the status is. Maybe less than two, it's okay. Greater than uh, less than eight, it's of concern. Above eight, it's uh, critical. So what we're going to do is going to create a new measure. And I put that measure in here. Let's have a look at it. It's going to be called total breach status. It uses a switch. And the first argument is is a, a kind of value, and then it evaluates all these pairs until it comes to this the first parameter which meets that value, the first one that is true, and then it will return this corresponding value here. So when we've got two or fewer breach days, we'll get OK. If and it will stop, then if it less than eight, we'll get concern. If it's more than that, if this is the else clause, it will be critical. So we've got total breach status. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to come along to our measure, our sorry, our card, and we're going to switch the category off. That's just the name of the measure. We don't need it. We're going to switch the title on. And again, we're going to make it the title text to be equal to a field value. And that field value is going to be the measure that we've just created total breach status. And I click on OK, and that gives us OK. And as we move up, that will change. The other thing that we'll do is we'll change the background depending on the number of breach counts. So in this time, we'll do uh, conditional formatting by rules on total breach days, and we'll create the rules. If greater or equal to, we've all got to say zero, and is less than or equal to two, then that's our okay, and we'll just choose a nice green. And otherwise, we'll add a rule there if it's greater or equal to that would be free and is less than or equal to eight. That's going to be our of concern. So I'll make that into a yellow. Otherwise, I'm going to add a new rule if it's greater than or equal to that will be nine. And we have to put in one here. So let's put in a really large value. Then what we need is a kind of reddish color. So I'll do that and we can see that the background reflects the status. So let's take that usage down a bit. A concern is eight. And then if we go to OK, that's two. Our final thing is to add that dynamic headline text. I'm going to come to insert. I'm going to insert a text box. And first of all, I'll start off by putting some static text in that text box. Now let's make that text dynamic. I'm going to say plus value and I'm going to choose selected wind strength. That's the measure that we created. We put it in there with wind conditions of slight breeze. Then I'm going to do exactly the same to put the usage parameter in here. Let's do that. Usage parameter value, I think was the name. Let's put that in there, 1.4%. And then there would be how many breach days? Let's put a value in there, and that was total breach days. Lovely, and as we change things a bit, we can see those change. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've learned about what if parameters and scenario analysis, but lots of other interesting Power BI techniques at the same time. We do do lots of videos, so I hope you'll subscribe to our channel, and I look forward to seeing you at another video. Thank you.